And now you can hear me. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to say black hat, white hat, but <laughs> there's only white hats here. Welcome to the UNA with Matt Cuts. Welcome to Matt Cuts. Most of you know him, but for those that don't, he is a distinguished engineer in charge of Web Spam. And that doesn't mean that he spams the web, nor that he's distinguished at it. It just means that Google has really weird titles. He would be better described, I think, as the Attorney General of Search. And if you're spamming Search, he's coming for you. Now, um, I've got about 20 minutes or so of questions. Don't get panicked, because we've run this session longer than we did before. I might very well run it a bit longer than we yelled at. See how it goes. And then we're going to get into a lot of questions. I think I'm going to cover a lot of questions that a lot of you have as well, including what's going on over here. But Matt, I thought we would start off with what everybody is really, really wanting to know about. If we use the NSA prison program, will that allow us will that allow us to finally see what the search terms are that are not provided? If you need to take any emergency calls, Google phone is yeah, here, I need to, ready to go. I need to use the emergency phone call functionality yeah. here. Uh, Larry's on the abort, line. Abort, abort. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, no. was that a serious no, call? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get back to this. But uh, seriously, we have these animals up here. I'm sure this involves them because uh, we clearly Well, I think the question really is, which will it be, pig, polar bear, or pup? Can I see those? I think the next update will be called pig. And, you know, polar bear. Oh, it is white. Yeah. Pug. No update. <laughs> What's the, oh, I almost forgot to say before we get to before you answer that question, yeah. Matt is going to be doing a lot of debunking. So if I have a question that come up, I will pull up my Matt Cuts oh, debunking flowchart right look at here. That. Oh my goodness. You merely need to go through and try to determine <laughs> whether or not it's something you think is relevant or not to those. And if you've not seen it, it's not on the website. Everybody can get it. And um, you, know, you can download it or you can you know, read it on Matt's desk. Later on. Excellent. Yeah. All right, you can read it on your own chest because Kara got us a thousand of them and they'll be downstairs. So, so everyone can help keep on guessing. Yes. yes, yes, I would appreciate that. But in this case, there are no quite crazy questions. Everyone's very involved. And uh, so, what's the deal with these updates? Um, let's start off with Panda, okay? Okay. Uh, last time you confirmed that we had a Panda update, you kind of confirmed it. You said one was coming in a few days. Then there was this big thing that happened, and we all said, oh, yes, that's the 25th Panda update. And uh -huh. we said, we're not going to confirm it anymore because it's never fun. But it stayed fine. So um, how many of you have <laughs> So we actually uh, we had it, an update of Panda about a month and a half ago. Um, we have not updated it. Normally, we have it about once a month. We haven't updated it in the last six weeks because we're looking at pulling in a new signal. Uh, we're hoping to make sure that regular webmasters who might have been affected by Panda, we found a new signal that we think will um, will help pull a few people out of the gray zone and, and do a little bit better. And so we're looking at how to integrate that and make sure that things work. Um, but there's something that you need to know about Panda, which is the, the general way of things, that how they normally work with Docker Sync Update, which is you have something really big that launches, like Panda 1.0, Panda 1 the very first version of Panda was really quite large. And then you know, future version, maybe not quite as big. And then eventually you get down to sort of like an almost steady state. And Panda has almost reached that steady state. So we typically update Panda about once a month. We've reached the point where rather than pushing one update, uh, we reached the point where we would push an update with just the large movers, and then the rest would be baking into our index for a period of several days. And now we've reached the point where instead of doing even the big movers, we just start baking in new Panda data into so in an average month, small part you might expect that we're rolling out new Panda data about 10 days out of that month. So one third of the time is new Panda data rolling out. But the thing to remember is it's not as big as it was before. It's gone down and down and down until now Panda updates are relatively small. 
small compared to the normal sort of index flux and trace and all that kind of stuff. So when you say we had one, you mean like we kind of had a big refresh about a bunch of things? Well, but not, not a big refresh, not but big, like a but 10 a day. Yes. I don't want to say if we had a period that we had. Perhaps that wasn't a good way of putting it, but. We had a panda dance. So panda dance. 10 days long. Oh, but that's much better. That, yeah. <laughs> I can just hear the what's black and white. Yeah, white no, jokes I know. I regret it for a minute. Came out, but there yeah. was. Um, um, but yeah, so Panda has reached the point where, for the most part, it's a small enough incremental amount of change that we're, you know, normally whenever there's an algorithmic update, we say, okay, if it's something really large, people need to know what exactly it is. You know, they need to know what to look for, and so we blog about that. But Panda is starting to reach that steady state, and that's from after March. So, yeah, I'm trying to get you like kind of like in 2010 ish. Whatever ish number. Yeah. All right. Why not just announce all these things? Like, why not just tell us every single time you do an update? We put it all out on a website. Go. Well, we tried that. We actually did that for about a year, right? Uh, we actually announced every month what had launched in the last month. And the first time it came out, Bear Schwartz and a whole lot of other people went kind of crazy. Oh my gosh, this is fantastic! And by the end of the year, people were like, "Okay, 53 updates. Please stop talking about it, right? You know." And so we have over 500 changes that happen, algorithmic changes, every single year. And so on any given day, we're usually launching one or two things. Now, often it's small stuff. We're improving synonyms. We're you know, changing ranking for Vietnamese or something like that. But um, if we talked about, hey, there's this update or hey, there's that update, every single time, people would kind of go crazy from the noise of it all. So typically we reserve that for when there's something big that people might notice anyway. And it's always difficult to, to assess. Like, with Penguin 2.0, which we just rolled out a little while ago, we were worried that the impact would be big enough that a lot of people would be taken off guard. So we wanted to telegraph that. So we made a video. We actually you know, did a quick post to let people know when Penguin went out. Um, and in English, it was a relatively small impact, along the lines of 3%. If you were in, say, Turkish, it was much larger, like 10.9%. And so that's the sort of thing when you would want to announce it and let people know when it goes out. And so the protests that are happening in Turkey right now. <laughs> no, no. Nothing just to do with nothing to do with us. Trying to understand, as far okay. as I know. Just saying, <laughs> correlation isn't causation, but <laughs> that might come up later. Yeah. Um, now, there's a variety of ways people try to figure out if something's going on. There's all this chatter that'll go on in forums, and then and then red alerts go off. Perry, Perry, put your hand up. This is Perry Schwartz, John no, no, Perry Schwartz, the news editor at Marketing Land and Search Engine Land, who is like the the guru of I think something's up. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, sees all this stuff going on there. And now we've even got tools out there that go through and say, hey, you know, the, the temperature today is you're burning a nail. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right? And, yeah, and then yeah. we go, and then so it goes, it goes off, and then we send a message over to like, hey, Boo, something's going on. And then you guys go, a couple times you come back and say, no, I don't know what's going on with it. So, yeah. are, you know, are, is everybody crazy? Are the tools crazy? Or are they, you know? Um, it's not necessarily that the tools are crazy, but there is a lot of sampling or subsampling skew. So, for example, uh, we're rolling out a change that will affect um, some spammy queries uh, today, and it actually started rolling out, and it affects maybe 0.3 to 0.5 percent of queries. So most people won't even notice. But already on a lot of black hat forums, people are posting, "Hey, this is something that's affecting me. What's going on here?" So you got to think about. The SEO industry as a whole probably cares about maybe 20% of all queries. So if people are entering their own queries to be tracked, then you're always going to have a slightly skewed basis. So whenever some of the outside tools are saying, hey, there's something really big going on, that doesn't necessarily mean that if you look at the entire volume of all the queries, it's actually skewed. All right, let's come back. I want to come back to that because I want to talk about it more. But let's, let's talk about that in the greater context of Penguin. So we had our fourth release with the Penguin 2.0 technology under the hood. Yep. And then people still see spam getting through. I mean, I had one person who said, like, look at this. This site is ranking for a really competitive term, in my opinion. And, you know, oh, you could see all the links have suddenly happened since April. And they went like this. And they're all the same anchor text. And you look at it and you go, yeah, why did that get through? So, yeah. well, so the, the thing to bear in mind is usually an algorithm is not targeted to improve every single search under the sun. They're normally targeted toward a specific type of spam or a specific type of query. So Penguin was targeted for web spam, but it's not targeted toward, for example, tax sites. It's not targeted towards you know, a lot of other types of spam. And so Penguin 2.0 launched, and it actually goes deeper than Penguin 1.0. Penguin 1.0 would typically just affect the home page of the site. 
Penguin 2.0 can go deeper in the, in the sense that it affects actual individual pages or can affect individual pages over an entire site. But it still doesn't uh, tackle, say, hack sites. So we have another group of people who are working on, hopefully within the next few weeks, working on um, addressing hack sites. Barry wanted me to nod because it's really significant. OK, OK. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah. so, you can all share along. <laughs> well, so let me just try to give you the very brief. Because you never said this thing about the home page. Right. That's well, all new. Uh, I actually, if you were listening very oh, closely very on, on this weekend, and you Google. had the decoder ring on yeah. and then timestamp 302.1 yes. to 302.4. So, so I, I thought I would call it out again just in case people had missed it. Now that that specific hole is closed, Thank I'll talk about that hole. Um, but the, the way to think about it is we're always looking at different types of queries and how to make them better. Um, Penguin is designed to target some stuff, but if you look at, say, payday loans on google.co.uk, it wasn't targeted for the specific spam techniques that those guys were using, some of which are illegal. What were they doing? <laughs> <laughs> some of which are <laughs> illegal um, and evil and deceptive. And, and OK, let me, let me let's. We can go Conan Silence. Put pen in that. No, no, no. Okay, we'll, we'll put a pen in that. that. I'll come okay. back to it, All which right. is um, we have the change that just launched earlier today is actually targeted toward those sorts of spammy queries like payday loans on Google.co.uk. We do see a different ranking. We have another change coming out in the next few weeks that tackles that from another direction. And so Penguin, in some sense, is helping to reduce a certain type of, of web spam. And then you get onto these other two things that are launching. And hopefully, even the stuff that people were angry about, oh, well, what about this really incredibly spammy query, you know, payday loan, debt consolidation by Viagra, generic online, cheap mean or whatever, you know. Well done. Thank you. You know, <laughs> my standard query yeah. right, to see how spammy <laughs> things are. Um, hopefully, that gets better. And then as people circle back and take a look from a long time away, they, they say, OK, things are better overall. Now, now, what was the thing I forget that we said? Let's come back to that. Payday loan? No, there was. Illegal, illegal, illegal stuff. Oh, you were going to tell us okay. how to spam illegal. Google. Illegal illegally. is the word that's enough to set me off, which is, you know, okay, so I'm just curious. I'm going to ask people to raise their hand, but it's a pretty soft poll. Feel free to raise your hand. I would like people to raise their hand. How many people work on in-house SEO? Okay, that's a pretty huge fraction. I won't ask the people who are like black hats or affiliates out on their own, freelancing. No, I'm black hats. Or, black hats? Any black hats? Somehow there's never any black hats. <laughs> I should tell you I have multiple Googlers in the room who are keeping an eye out. OK. Uh, say hello to the person sitting to your left. Uh, you know. <laughs> OK. So the, the fact is, the vast majority of people in here are not only in-house. They're looking to make their own white hat manufacturer or whatever site rank well. right? People are not interested in doing the illegal stuff like hacking sites, doing tons and tons of blog spam, you know, exploiting various ways that people you know, can do links so, that are illegal. So Penguin was going after some very specific things, even though you said it was generally going after web spam. It's going after now web spam, but it's about. going, if you look at the portfolio of web spam, it's not dark, targeted after 100% of it. It's targeted after a large chunk of it, which okay. is where a, large, a lot of the problems were. So if you want to compete in something like payday loans now, you have to think about a lot of the people who are ranking number one or who were until today or who won't be in a couple weeks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, they, they were doing illegal stuff, right? And, and we've, said, we've said for a long time, there will be a fork in the road where you have to decide, do you want to follow doing illegal stuff, or are you willing to try to say, OK, how am I going to make my, my website rank well in a white hat way? And I think the vast majority of people in the audience are interested in that. And that's, that's what you did today. That's gone after payday loans just in the yeah. UK? No, no, worldwide. Worldwide. Yeah. So, so now payday loan, if I do a search for payday loans on Google, it's going to be clean. Squeaky clean. It looks, the best different. App. it looks different. I'm not saying everything's going to okay. be perfect. Authorship next to the links? Or no, no. no, no. Um, but but it, if you compare it to, say, three days ago or even okay. yesterday versus today, it definitely looks different. It will continue. We'll keep working on making it cleaner. But we don't want people to get frustrated and say, because of this one query, oh, clearly spam succeeds. I need to be a black hat. That is not the case. And I, I wouldn't go jumping into that without really thinking about it hard. And so that's the payday update. <laughs> Because it's Google's big payday. So because you're going to roll out like um, Google shopping with payday exit. No. <laughs> payday. I just, I just want to get the conspiracy going payday now. Payday bars, yeah. Payday bar. um, so it's kind of funny because does it have um, a name? Well, internally, sure. Uh, <laughs> we normally, we you know, we'll, we'll refer to it by the guy who worked on it or the, the woman who worked on it. 
Um, but it's kind of funny. We were a little worried about uh, update name inflation oh. at Google. So we don't want to, so, you know, we've got Panda, we've got Penguin. People kind of understand Panda's about quality right. and low quality. Penguin's about web spam. But we don't want to have a menagerie. We don't want to have tons and tons of. So, so we're not getting any of these. Well, oh, really? You know, we'll, it, it remains to be seen. Normally, we'll just say, "Hey, we had an update." You know, we'll talk about it. But we don't typically name them. <laughs> have you considered naming after uh, places in California, <laughs> perhaps surf spots like Mavericks, Mavericks or, or Alcatraz? Alcatraz or, 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 no, no. no um, that was like four people who use Mac. <laughs> <laughs> what? Mavericks. Okay. It, it was funny, yeah. They're, you know, we Apple's did. doing a great job. All right. they, they, I wasn't trying to get you to go down that road. Okay, all right. No, it's all right. <laughs> Siri told me not to. Now powered by Bing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wait, I'm getting a thing on Google now. Oh, I do have a thing on Google now. Oh, dang. By the way, my you know, my Nexus is sitting here saying, "No, I'm going to update you to Gmail, <laughs> even though you're looking at an email." So it's like went down. That's no, all good. It's good. Um, you can handle it on the fly. So. Yeah, I was going to my phone now. We, about halfway through, we're going we're to open it up, but mm -hmm. we've had this back and forth on links, right? Mm -hmm. um, which I like, have been trying to characterize them as sort of like the fossil fuel of signals, polluting and bad, and I want cold fusion social technology or something. <laughs> um, I mean, there's, there's problems with them, and to me, like, there's paid links and links you can't tell if there's pink and advertorial links, and now you're this link's okay, and that link's out and okay, or whatever, and, and then... Like, I thought my head was going to explode because we, we get into this whole new world of now where, and I got one on Tuesday, the link removal request. Hi, you've been linking to our website. Could you take the link down? Mm -hmm. Like, you know what? Our link is not causing you to rank bad on Google. But, and, and also, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I, among the things that I never thought I would be writing would mm -hmm. be about how we have to get links removed. So, mm -hmm. well, why don't you just disavow all the bad links yourself? Why, why, why do we need to do it? Well, I mean, if you know they're bad, sure. <laughs> the phone is ringing. The phone is ringing. No, so what we try to do with our algorithms is find and detect those those sites on our own, so that you guys don't have to worry about it. Now, w basically, some uh, an SEO dropped me an email about this and said, "Okay, well, how is it fair that this guy who spammed and made a bunch of links now I have to go and clean all this up?" And my answer to him was it's basically a one-time market correction, right? Because for a long time, everybody thought, I have to get as many links as possible, links, links, links. I have to get all the, all the links. You know, If I can go and pay $5 and get a bunch of links, that's a great link to get. And there was a great rant. I recommend everybody look it up uh, that Danny did at SMX last year about so you don't want the, the easy links. You want the hard links, right? And so I, I, I sort of view this as this one-time correction where for a long time, everybody was getting some really low quality, really spammy links. And for the most part, everybody in this room, and hopefully if anybody asks you, should, should know by now, look, pay more attention to the quality of your site so that you get the higher quality links. Don't just go spam a blog, you know, 10,000 blogs or 100,000 blogs or a million blogs or whatever, those kinds of things. And so, yes, we are going through a little bit of a transition, but I think we'll get, we're, we're moving to a healthier world, a world in which people are not spamming my blog or your blog or, you know, signing a ton of guest books or hacking a bunch of sites. We're, we're moving toward that world. It gets harder and harder to spam every single year, but it's going to take some time before we get there. And so if someone on your team or if you or someone hired an SEO or for whatever reason generated spam links and you need to clean it up, the disavow tool is there as a way to help you do that because writing to every single person, you might be able to get some of the links down, but if you can't get them all taken down, that's just an extra option where you can say, look, this guy won't cooperate with me. I'm just going to disavow the link. Now, so, so basically we have a, a one-time devaluation of links, and now they've been readjusted, and they're equal to one, one Canadian dollar. <laughs> so, I think Canadian dollar is still worth it more than the U.S. now. So. Uh, well, well, we're done. Know. The pain's I, done. I we'll never go through this again. I wouldn't compare it to dollars, right, because okay. you don't want to be paying for links. But, but, well, <laughs> right? yeah. but it, it's definitely the case that now, compared to, say, six years ago or seven years ago, people are much less likely to just be like, okay, how, how much do I have to pay to get enough links to rank number one? You know, there are still people who right. say that, but they're eventually going to wake up and smell the coffee and realize that's not the best way forward. So under the devaluation, it's costing you twice as much to get the links. Well, no, 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 don't go that way. It costs, you, it costs you effort <laughs> to make a great site. That's always the intent. 
Well, we yeah. had in the morning example, we had somebody that got hit by penguin that uh, Marcus Tober was showing, and they went down, mm -hmm. and then they went higher than they were afterward because they, you know, you know, but they they actually wrote a note in to uh -huh. Google saying thank you for penguin, I believe. Well, and that is the whole base at that. Yes, all the time. We actually have a lot of SEOs. Thank you for, oh, for, for, yeah. yeah, excellent. Yeah, okay. yeah. Either their site went up, or hey, we got a lot of sort of a wake up call, and we did a lot of cleanup, and and we appreciate it. I've had a lot of SEOs write in and say, okay, I can't do Black Hat anymore because it's not a sustainable method of income. You know, maybe I make money one month, but I can't count on making it the, the next month. So you win. I'm not. You know, I'm gonna go White Hat. And and then and then they're really resentful, like, oh, now I have regular steady income from you know White Hat SEO, ugh, jerks, you know, it's a lot, Google. or or they'll do mobile app, you know, mobile apps or something like that. And, um, and so I think it's kind of interesting. Our guidelines have always been kind of steady. We've always said, look, make a great site such that people want to link to your site. That makes it a lot easier to rank. The links come easier, all that sort of stuff. It's just we're now bringing some of these tools to bear where. You know, uh, that's backed up behind with the algorithms. Now, uh, just a couple more, and then we'll, we'll open up. But um, how do we even know what counts anymore? Because it was mm -hmm. like, oh, press release, press release links. They, look, they're getting spammed. You're like, oh, no, those don't count. Oh, well, look at this. Uh, JC Penny bought all these links. Yeah, we knew most of those links already. Mm -hmm. Well, well, look at look at this company. They got all those links. Yeah, well, we had already taken care of that. And it's like, well, where's the decoder ring of what links actually count anymore? Because <laughs> I thought. I thought the rant that you did last year was pretty good. You do want the hard-won links. Like, a press release link, by definition, is a link that you're paying for. You give somebody 100 bucks or whatever, and you get to write whatever you want, and some of them let you embed anchor text. And that, that, that anchor text is fundamentally paid and shouldn't count. Mm -hmm. so, so I feel like our standards have been pretty consistent from the beginning. People often have a good idea about, okay, if I just write a 200-word article and embed some keyword-rich ignore text and then guest blog it or syndicate it or whatever all over the world and spray and pray, they probably have a good idea that compared to just making a really good content or whatever, you know, the one is going to stand the test of time, the other one might not. Now, you recent a video where you encourage people to focus on things like speed and design and mm -hmm. user experience and rather than worrying about getting those links and, um, mm -hmm. really? Yeah. I, I don't mean it, to, but yeah. really? Because, I mean, links still are really important. Wait, wait. Yes, but yes, but I mean, I'm so and, okay. and usually your examples are like, and, I'll give you and hip monk, you know, came from nowhere, and then they blew uh -huh. up, and and a little site called Facebook never even bought links, and they did successful, but like you know, Joe Bob's car repair is sitting there going, well, I'm no longer linked to me. So uh, there's a, there's a lot of Bob's there's a, really a lot good of mechanic. By I'm the way. sure he's a great mechanic, in which case he can get testimonials, he can get word of mouth. But I, I want to point out. <laughs> Look, there's a company called Apple that focuses on design and making things just work and a great user experience, and they have done pretty well. Right? Copying, and copying Android? No, no. Uh, well, I'm not trying I'll to just give you a chance. No, no, I'm not going to. Just give you a I chance. Wasn't I, mean, to I was just there. reading some of the chatter on Google Plus, but you know. That was I wasn't trying to go there. I was saying, look, they make innovative new things like the Mac Pro, the cylindrical. Yeah. Like, if you aim for that sort of a fantastic user experience, you will find it easier to get traction and users and word of mouth and links and stuff like that on the web. That's that's all I'm trying to say. Anyway. Um, can you give us a quick update on the whole penalties thing? So, mm -hmm. you got the algorithmic penalties. I think we're kind of clear on that. Uh, Google comes along, decides, boom, you're automatically hit, and the only way you get out of that box is you fix whatever it was that got hit. And there's no messages about that. That's right. You don't know it. Right. You just got to kind of guess it. You got to kind of figure it out, or maybe so. you give us the update. Or <laughs> so so I was at the 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 reception last night, and I was talking to someone who had flown all the way from India, like 22 hours, and he said, you know, am I affected by this algorithm because I got a message? And the fact that he didn't know messages are for manual web spam actions means I feel like I need to reiterate this. So algorithmic stuff, there's 500 of them rolling out every year. There's a lot of different changes. It can affect, any algorithm can affect tens of millions of sites. And typically, it's all just the ranking. It's not as much like a discrete algorithm. So we don't have messages typically for just an algorithm, unless it's something like detecting that your site was hacked or something like that. But if we have taken direct manual web spam action that will you know, directly affect the ranking of your site, then you will almost always receive a message in the Webmaster Console, which I think is helpful, because that's saying, OK, look, a person thought that your site was violating the guidelines. Let's let a person know about that. And that's something that we didn't do a few years ago. One thing that's new as of today, I'll go ahead and announce it. No, is no, don't tell me. 
Yeah, no, I, I think people might be interested. Right. People have been wondering about, well, when are we going to get example URLs? Yes, Danny's nodding. It's important. Um, so we're doing a test run today. If everything works out, we'll start tomorrow, but certainly within the next few days, where when we send a manual web spam action, we will send example one or two or three example URLs that demonstrate what the problem is in our opinion. I think that'll be helpful. Um, I'll do one more, and then we'll we'll go open things up. Um, the penalties, by the way, they they all have an expiration date that varies from 48 hours if you're a giant brand to no no oh I sorry no I was on one of those black hat don't, forums, don't, and that's how it kind of yeah, don't start the conspiracy no. no but they all they all have penalties based on how severe you think something right. is yep. and then when they what's the maximum penalty uh <laughs> they can they can go pretty far right is if there we, life in prison no there's not life in prison but you know it 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 is the case like if a domain is completely awful black hat pure evil we don't think there's any redeeming characteristic to it then we might set penalties or, or manual actions along the line such that well you wait until that domain expires you know that wow. sort of thing so you know in that neighborhood, that sort of thing. But typically, we take manual action. The the length of the penalty depends on how severe we think the infraction is, which can be what are you doing, like cloaking or hacking or black hat or just something simple like keyword stuffing or hidden text. Uh, it depends on on whether we've seen repeated instances, so the severity, all those sorts of criteria. And then when um, do I break this, Michelle? If I try to pull it off your thing, sorry, it's not mine. I'll just leave it. I'll leave the cover on. It won't destroy your thing. Um, um, when they expire, by the way, um, you guys go back and then you decide, oh, it's expired. It's not like now you get out of jail free. You go back and review it no, again, right? Right now they You'll say, well, okay, you got out of no, jail, but... Right now they automatically expire. And several years ago we did a study where we said, well, what if we compare our new spam fighting leads to just the stuff expiring? And at that point, the new spam fighting leads were better. And so we said, okay, we'll just figure if that person keeps spamming or spams again, we'll catch them again. Um, but there have been a few instances where we've said, okay, we found a way to prioritize things such that if it's automatically expiring, we'll take a second look. But the, the manual okay. actions automatically expire, and all other things being equal, the default is then the, the you know... The you don't automatically back. go take the second look. There may be other things that cause you to... Uh, we don't automatically look at the site. In some instances, we may go back and circle back and say, okay. well, this was really bad a while ago. So is let's really double check. All right. Um, all right, we're going to the general questions. I believe everybody has Wi-Fi now, and I have to apologize. No, who doesn't have Wi-Fi? One person doesn't have Wi-Fi. <laughs> In-house SEO. <it's> no. <laughs> oh dear. Um, it looks like most of you do have, and I've got questions coming in. If you really can't get your question in, um, you can go to the back of the table and maybe and let them know. Otherwise, I may just sort of open it up and say, "Who didn't get to use the Wi-Fi?" And we'll go that way as well. But you can't lie about it. Um, <laughs> And I apologize for the Wi-Fi disappearing. It's like the entire port of Seattle lost all their internet. So that was very inconvenient. But the good news is tomorrow you will have twice as much Wi-Fi. So um, <laughs> you can stream to your heart's content. Danny, do you mind if I talk about smartphones very quickly? Yeah. Here, do you want the demo? Yes. Okay, yes. Go ahead. Not this oh, yeah, one. I forgot to ask you about that. Smartphone, yeah, the these smartphone. guys. Um, so we, we did a blog post uh, early this morning that basically yes. said, we, we timed it. We were like, if we can get it live before the session, that'd be really helpful. Um, you really need to be thinking about mobile. Uh, mobile is happening much faster than almost anyone expected. And if you run a savvy site, you should probably look at the graph of when mobile will exceed your desktop usage. So we're starting to think a lot about mobile. We want a lot of websites to be thinking about mobile as well. And we noticed a couple common problems. One is, every sing if you come on a smartphone, every single URL on your site redirects to exactly one mobile URL. And that's a really bad experience. If you've got a thousand pages and they all redirect to one, like the root page of your mobile site, that's bad. And likewise, sometimes when Googlebot mobile for smartphones came, some sites redirect to the feature phone version of the site, which then redirects back to the desktop version of the site, and you get it in an infinite loop. So if we see those kinds of errors, or potentially other errors in the future, if a user is searching on their smartphone, and we know already that it doesn't work that well on the smartphone, then we might change the ranking. So if your site is not not even smartphone friendly. If your site is like smartphone antagonistic, you know, and making these kinds of errors, then it might not rank as much. Um, the other thing that I wanted to telegraph, if you're willing to nod, is um, <laughs> okay. is is there was a good session at. Usually, uh, when you say I want to telegraph, thing that's a universal <laughs> sign. Um, 
so at, at Google I.O., there was a great talk called uh, Instant Mobile Websites. And they have some page speed recommendations. It's a free tool that you can look at and see what are the, the potential slowdowns with your mobile site. So in the same way that on the desktop web, we said, you know what, if your site is really, really slow, we think that's a bad user experience, its rankings might go down, we might start doing the same thing with mobile websites as well. So you might want to think about, is my mobile version of my website fast or is it responsive? Whatever you need to do, just so it's not a really bad outlier in terms of speed. But it is worth thinking okay. about your mobile experience. When's the smartphone thing happening? Um, it's been approved. I looked in the launch calendar, and it's been approved. But these things can take a while to roll out. And so technically, I don't know. is that a penalty? Uh, it won't rank an, as highly. An adjustment. It, it's, it won't rank as highly, but it doesn't come from the web spam team. So it's, it's the mobile team that's saying, look, you, it's sort of like if you're in Japan, they have certain phones with certain capabilities. Right. You don't want to return a website that doesn't have that capability. And that's about, I think that really is the first time you guys have actually said, now mobile is making a difference in ranking. I mean, maybe a long time ago when we had, like, WAP. Right. No, we. In Japan specifically, they have a really a lot of, of smartphone okay. adoption. So it, we've done some Japan specific stuff, but, but this is the br first broader. This is this is the first because really we large you know and now I was saying to Matt you know we did the periodic table we had a big debate on whether the mobile one there's an element and now I probably will go back and very quickly add it. So yours are they're all outdated. Throw them away. <laughs> yeah, um, this thing's at least four years we'll, old. We'll, right? we'll probably yeah. add the mobile element because we were right on the fence and it's enough that we probably have to kick it in. Yeah. So, um, so don't really think you have a limited edition. Yes, exactly. So don't panic, but put a little bit of thought into mobile, because you probably have a lot more users coming from mobile than you expect. And, I, and I'm going to just lightning round you on yeah. a lot of these. Oh, we'll go through it. Got a natural links warning. Do I disavow the bad links right away, or should I contact the sites first and ask for removal? And if so, why? You kind of answer. Well, well the question is fundamentally fairness. If you were competing with somebody, and this goes back to the one-time market correction, and you were able to spam and rank well for a few months, and then you can just do a disavow, and within a day you get back, then that's not really fair to all the other sites who are trying to compete on a level playing field. So but the idea there is if you have gotten unnatural links, your webmaster was doing it, you know, you, you, you sent out a bunch of, of spam emails, whatever, you were doing these reciprocal link exchanges and you went overboard or whatever, I think it's fair that for the other people who are trying to compete against you, you need to work on doing some cleanup. And in order to do that, writing to the other webmasters is a good thing. The other thing is, imagine you get all these spammy links, you get caught, you disavow them, but those spammy links are still live on the web. Now somebody comes in, they're doing competitor analysis or whatever, and they're saying, well, what are the backlinks to this site? They see a bunch of spammy links, and they assume, oh, Google's stupid. This site is ranking. So we'd like to see some progress where you actually clean up the broken windows and you make the web a little bit of a better place in terms of getting those bad links down. Hey, any chance we're going to just get you just tell us all the backlinks to sites? Um, we, we are discussing if we can give more backlinks to webmasters. Because we don't want people to need to pay 100 bucks a month or whatever to, to just get their, their list of backlinks. So we're looking at ways that, we, and, and this would still be a ways away. But I don't want to just for my side. I mean, I want to be able to look at sites and know, well, because it's hard. It's people, right. people say to you, well, I don't understand what's going on with the site. And then I have to go, neither do I, because according to Google, it has no links. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, can anybody see a way that such a tool like that could be abused for evil if you can look at all of your competitor links? No, 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 of course not. Yeah, what but we don't, we don't no. know if they count or not, right? At least I can see a way that it can sure. be for good for saying, hey, <laughs> Google, I, I, I can see this is... I guarantee you a few black hats if we gave all the links out to everybody. could see a few ways to abuse we'll it log like that. We'll log yeah, maybe we could have, like, with our Google Plus trusted account. debuggers, you know, like Danny Sullivan or something, who oh, can yeah. look at stuff. Oh, no, that'd be cool. Just give me a console, yeah, and right. I'll only use it for good. Just come visit the Googleplex. I'll yeah. be right there. <laughs> well, if we get to go to the Google store afterward. <laughs> Poor Matt, when I do go up there, I like to go to the Google store. They have all this Google stuff. You have to have a Google employee take you there. I mean, I still spend my own money, but it might... So could you just stand there in that corner for 45 minutes? I'm going to walk around, try on some t-shirts, pick out some stuff. Here you go. All right. Um, two years ago, you told us not to worry about not providing, because it would only be a single digit of queries. And now I'm living. Uh, I would be, you, you I would be delighted to answer that question. Yes. <laughs> So I remember being on that call. Um, we actually had a PR person on the phone, me and the PR person talking to Danny. And Danny says, OK, what percentage of, of sites are going to be affected? Now, I was talking about rolling out this particular change uh, for SSL for English only yeah. and for Google.com only, not for international domains. Right. And we knew that in aggregate it was going to be something like 7.9% 
of all of the queries on Google would no longer have uh, the referrer set in terms of the actual keywords. You would still be able to see that it came from Google.com. And I, it was kind of funny because I was like, oh, I, it'll be a single digit percentage to roll this out. And the PR person was like, no. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> And, and, and the PR person was broken. The PR person was totally right because we were talking about that specific change, and it was an aggregate 7.9 percent of queries. But uh, but we continued to roll it out like four months later to different languages yeah, and it's different slightly different now. I think it's up to maybe 85 percent. So l let me. I will. I'm happy to make a strong it's case. It's going for there. It. It's going to 100 percent, right? I mean, that's I, ultimately, I, I, except for the NSA. So here's the thing about the NSA. Right. I read a book called Little Brother several years ago from Cory Doctorow that yeah. talks about how governments could spy on individual people, and it really convinced me that we needed to have as much encrypted traffic on the web as possible. And so I came back to Google and I started pushing for SSL, and a bunch of people started pushing for SSL. And given the events of the last week. I feel pretty good about trying to make sure that people have an encrypted connection talking to Google. And if you go back to 2011, Chrome has added all kinds of really good elliptic curve cryptography and what's called perfect forward secrecy, which means even if somebody records all of the stuff that happens between you and someone else talking on you know, an encrypted connection, if they could decrypt, uh, decrypt that like 10 years later, they'd be able to because they just wait until the computers get fast enough. Perfect forward secrecy means that you set up a single session ID and you use that for the encryption, and after it's done, the session ID goes away. So even if you have a recording of all that encrypted data, you're not able to decrypt it 10 years later when the computers get fast enough. So I think there's a general story arc, and I, I, I don't want to get indignant, but there is a story arc of like, look, we need to be thinking about users and protecting their privacy, and we've done a lot of stuff over the years. The first to do in SSL and Gmail, the first to offer encrypted search. Chrome does all kinds of great things, including PIN certificates. So there is a, a large number of people who donate to the EFF and feel strongly about civil liberties and privacy. And if that takes precedence, I think that's a pretty good trade-off. But why not just give us more of the data in Google Webmaster Tools? Because, I mean, we, 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 we could do. do, and you do, we but do. it's like, where are we still at like 90 days, right? Like I want, my, it's, I want it all 90, there. I want to be able to go back since the dawn of time but and know what my terms were until the end of the universe. But we do provide it. We used to provide it for 30 days. Now we provide it for 90 days. You can download it and keep it as long it. as you want. We increase the amount of data that people have to the baby. point where... We're doing a duet, by the way. So. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you care enough, you can download the data and keep it and slice it and dice it. But for the people who they just want to look at 30 days or 90 days worth of data, that's enough for them. If you really want to go back a year, it's worth it to install the Python script or to download the data. And but you, you have all that data, right? You could, for a website, to do it. I mean, why can't you just give us like the top 100 terms back for 20 years? Web oh, I, I'm, okay, I'll take that feedback to the We're team. always listening and always open the new no, ideas. That's fair it. feedback no, because, is, yeah. because we provide a ton of data over a rolling window that you can then archive. But if we kept just a little bit of the data for a it long period so of nice. time, I can understand because you like you know control. like yeah. you know, your top term is not provided eight hundred thousand requests term right. number two something else three yeah, yeah no that's fair <laughs> that's fair so you know that's fair but, but I, you know, it is not, I'm glad you have it and I think that right. gets forgotten but that you have that data out you, there. you can download it and I do think that top search queries if you look at it it does give you a pretty good idea of what your top search queries are and it's not like they change radically every month you know they're they're probably relatively steady from one month to the next. Did the NSA have to have an AdWords account to get the... <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. So is, was that an audience question? Is that... No, no, no. Okay. Um, why is... Um, no, I'll let you go with that. Why is, uh, <laughs> why is Panda so large brand focused? Does Google think small brands and sites have no value, at least in the travel industry? It's not large brand focused. Asked and answered. Yeah. Wow, okay. Um, when, does, when Google does the Penguin updates, do they hit... Why is it not pet brand focused? Why is it largely right? because it's, it's you feel like people feel that way, looking, but you don't think it is that way. It's right. not that way. Okay. It, we look at all the data that we have. It's not like we have a list of brands or it applies only to big sites. It, it right. applies to the data, you know. To it did any hit about.com. Do I? It did hit about.com. They were kind of a large brand. I, I don't want to call any <laughs> given site out because if we start calling sites, you'd out, have to name like demand and you have to name everybody <laughs> else too. And, Associated content. We, we rarely go into specifics. And then Marissa's going to get all mad because that's sites in charge of it. that we take action. Um, when Google does penguin updates, do they hit? Oh my God, I'm trying to say this. When no, we're okay. We're okay. Good. As a reminder, that's not a wall. 
That is an air wall, which is a wall that's made of air. Therefore, it reflects sound the same way air reflects sound, which is not at all. Um, <laughs> when Google does penguin updates, do they hit, for example, 2.7% of the keywords? I think the question is, like, how, when you do the penguin update, what, what's the percentage now? Like, yeah. Um, how many people are spamming Google to get hit by penguin? It's, it's pretty interesting because the, the thing that we just launched today, which is not related to Penguin, was about half a percent of queries, maybe down to 0.3%. Um, Penguin was something on the order of 2.7 to 2.9 in English, but it depends on, on how much spam there is. So I mentioned in Turkish there was 10.9% impact. I think in Arabic it was up to like 13%. And so this is something that you'll continually see. Like the change that we launched today uh, affects 0.3%, 0.4%, 0.5% in English. It affects four percent in Turkish, and so the, you know there's more spam in some of these languages in some of these countries, and so you have more impact in those locales. Um, uh, Matt has a habit of mentioning black hats and affiliates together as if they are synonymous, as he did earlier in this session. Says Ray. I feel bad says, about that. Says I'm Ray sorry. Hoffman. I feel bad about that. I'm sorry. Does Google truly view honest affiliates as equivalent to black hats? No, not at all. There are tons of, of honest affiliates. And there are a ton of affiliates that add value. It's just a knee jerk. So I, no, I, no, I, I felt bad about that as I said it, right? Because I had some, you know, I black hats, you know, sitting out in the cold, and I, I shouldn't have looped in and and grouped uh, affiliates with that. I will say, by volume, when you when you look at the amount of spam we see, we see more bad affiliates than good affiliates, right? Because there's a lot of lazy it, people who just take an affiliate fee. Would it be fair to say it. that you like affiliates that are adding some kind of value? Because that seems to be the problem. You get some affiliates are like. Yeah, I, I like, I'm simply in the middle of things. I like any site that adds value, right? And, and, and the degree to which I like it typically depends on how much value it adds. Like, if you look at Hipmunk, I think they make money by sending you off to an affiliate, you know, to buy the, the, the plane ticket. Why haven't you guys just bought Hipmunk? Uh, I don't, I don't know. know. We, we have. You had to spend one point three billion dollars on ways, so Facebook couldn't have it. Okay. I, I don't. I don't do the mergers and acquisitions. <laughs> I would have different approaches on some stuff and the same on other stuff. By the way, if we all get together and invent something that actually has no content but has lots of people doing stuff, will you guys give us one point three billion? Because <laughs> we'll split it up amongst ourselves, and it's uh, anyway. Um, does page speed impact the site's ability to rank well organically? Everyone understands that page speed can impact conversion rates, but mm -hmm. does it materially, materially, uh, materially impact the site's ability to rank well in SERPs? Fast site rank better. Uh, slow site ranks worse. So no, you don't. No, I, I'm being very precise. If okay. you run a fast site, that's great for users, great for ROI, fantastic. You should pay a lot of attention to caching and all that sort of stuff, but you don't get a boost for it. Um, it's the sites that are outliers in terms of being really slow that rank lower. So it's a penalty. Uh, well, they rank, they rank lower. I'd say you know adjustment. It's a, it, they rank lower. I'm getting confused because <laughs> they, they rank lower, but well, it's not a penalty. We, we, I understand what you're saying, though. We, but you're not a uh, penalty has like some notion of you did wrong or you violated Google's web spam guidelines. This is just you had a slow site, and so the entire ranking system with hundreds of ranking variables. There's one variable that says, okay, this is not as good of a user experience, and so it, on that scale, it doesn't look as good. All of the things being equal, if you've got two completely identical sites except for that, then it will rank lower. So I got a room full of people. Penalty is you, you, and you. You're going to jail because you were bad, and I can't see you guys in the back because you were too slow to get in here. So I'm not going to pick you to be on stage. You're not on the team. Uh, it works. In my I'm head. not sure I grokked the metaphor completely. It works in but, my head. Okay. You know, catch it on the replay. It'll be fine. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> you're too fast for me, Danny. I know. Hey, what? Well, <laughs> keep up. Keep up. Keep up. I'm trying. What was the deal with you guys using all the Facebook data now? By the way and ranking things better because of Facebook links. I thought you said you didn't do that. So what, are you talking about the presentation earlier today that said Facebook Well, Eric Inga had data that shows scientifically okay. that you're using Facebook data. OK. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just I saying he got up on stage, said I did a study, <laughs> and I submitted only stuff to Facebook, and those things ranked better because of Facebook likes and shares. I, I, uh, so let me, let me try to answer that as clearly as I can. Because I, I like Eric, but I disagree with his conclusions. Told you, um, Eric. I told you. So <laughs> come, come on up if you want. Come on up if you want. Here, have a polar bear. If I sit on that, I'll fall down, though. So I'm not going to do that. OK, OK. So, so let me give me my, my spiel, which was you, you tried <laughs> analytics, and you tried Chrome, and you came to the conclusion that those did not affect ranking or, or pages or URLs being discovered. That's correct, right. And I agree with that, yeah. OK? <laughs> if you just take it in the middle of Chrome with no weird SEO extensions well, or whatever. And your help on making sure we did 
that. Perfect. Absolutely. So, so there is a methodology. Don't just put a page off of your root page. Like, make a really deep URL. Don't tell anybody else about it. Don't install multiple snippets of JavaScript, yada, yada, yada. Um, but so for Facebook, I, I think for the most, <laughs> it feels very strange to have you right here. Um, <laughs> thank thank so, you for coming up, better. Eric. Yeah, that, that is better, actually. Yeah, yeah, OK. So, so the fact, <laughs> how about that? <laughs> Eric and I see eye to eye on practically everything. So it's security's it's, running off. They go, what should we do? Definitely well, not, not this, however. Not, not on this, but yeah. just because typically we don't have access. You know, Facebook and Google usually don't get along all that well. So we usually aren't able to crawl that many pages on Facebook. And so they usually block us, or we don't, it's not like we have a special feed of likes or anything like that. Um, and, and in fact, I think there was a, an SEO a couple years ago who said, aha, the number one ranking factor in Google is Facebook likes. Because whenever we looked at the correlation, the things that got a lot of likes tended to rank higher. But correlation does not equal causation. And so the problem is, if you make fantastic content, yes, people like it more, especially including on sure. Facebook. But they're also more likely to link to it. And that was the explanation for that. I think what we'll need to do is just go and huddle. And if you're willing, now that the test is concluded, to tell me the URLs, I can go back and look at the full link graph using our debugging console and see whether I could find whether there were some other links or something like that. You know, I, right, it's in everybody's interest that we nail down. So, X, so, no, I, so I, I, without I, extending the date further, <laughs> um, you're, you're, you're saying that really it shouldn't make a difference. You're seeing something you guys have to figure I, it out. I'm not completely excluding that there might have been some page on Facebook that had a list of likes, or right. we crawled Eric's page or something, and he had liked this, and maybe his page is set to 100% public. That's probably the mechanism by which we do it, crawling links, and then we found a link to your page, and then you had liked it, or someone had liked it, and then we followed that link, or something like that. And we can process a lot of JavaScript. So I'm not saying it's not possible. It's just in the same way it could have been via that mechanism, it could have shown up on any other link or something like that. So we'll, we'll dig into it and figure out what's going on. In general, we typically don't have access to a lot of Facebook data. Yeah, OK. Uh, I'm happy to do that. Uh, uh, I think part of what I'm hearing from you, too, is that you think that some of those pages might have gotten links by some other means. It's possible, yeah. Uh, we have checked by every source we have available to see what link data is available. Okay. <laughs> so we, we have maybe, a lot of links. We have a lot of links. So yeah. why don't we take a look and yeah, we'll right. figure out okay. what's going on. So more to, to more to come. All right. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Awesome. OK, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. And just to, just to reiterate, the, the things that I really liked about his presentation was he installed Google Analytics. It didn't lead to any pages getting indexed. Uh, he surfed it with Chrome. It didn't lead to, to the URLs getting indexed that way either. And next, Russ from Cheap Flights, if you can come on up. Russ from no, Cheap Flights. <laughs> 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 I'm going to put um, people on the if spot. Only my ho if my home page is mobile enabled, but the rest is still the desktop version, is that going to be a problem? Um, I, ideally, you could mobile enable the entire site, but uh, it helps a lot to mobile enable the root page, the home page. Like, if that's all you have the cycles and the resources for, you know, that's pretty good. Um, it's it's more. It sounds like what you said today was more an issue of if you're really screwing up right. people on mobile. Right. You have infinite redirects, yeah. or everything goes to one URL. Worst case, just treat a mobile phone, a smartphone, like a desktop browser, and then you can't be too far off. Sure. Right? Because yeah, you might have to zoom in a little bit or move around a little bit, but at least then you don't have wacky, cra crazy redirects. And for Google, we should foot. treat you specially, right? We should just do special no, things for no, Googlebot, right? No, no. <laughs> if you if you have something in your code that says if Googlebot do this, that's likely to be cloaking and can get you into a higher risk area. Please don't do that. Don't do you that. knew that, but yeah, please I don't know. do that. I just get you to say it. Yeah. Because no, but it came out because people are like, well, yeah. you can't, you know, you know, because there is a concern that like. Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute, if I'm showing you a mobile page, that's different than my other page, and sometimes radically different, is that cloaking? And to you, it's not, mm -mm. because the user's seeing different right. things, and Google will just come along and do whatever right. Google so I'll, I'll do my one-minute spiel, which is some people think that doing geolocation is cloaking, and it's not. You can search, like, if you go to google.com and you're on a French IP address, we will redirect you to google.fr. So we're, that's geolocation. It's just taking you to the best home page for a user given their IP address. That's totally fine. The only thing is don't treat Google like it's its own separate country. Just treat us like you treat a normal user coming from whatever the IP address is. Same thing for mobile. If you've got something, some experience for smartphone users where you redirect them to a mobile site, or for feature phones where you redirect them to a, to a feature phone site, just do the same thing for Google. Just treat Googlebot Mobile, which uses, uh, for smartphones, uses an iPhone user agent. Just treat us just like an iPhone, and then we'll be fine. Does Google have different ranking factors depending on different industries? I have a criminal law firm, 
and social media firm, and would that, or if I'm a criminal law firm and there's a social media company, would that not be as prevalent as other industries? And that, you kind of said something like this recently. Didn't you say you're going to start looking at authorities and subject um, specific? Yeah, things? that's one of my favorite questions so far, um, because we have looked at at topic specific ranking, and in theory there is low hanging fruit there. You could do say health ranking better than general web ranking. The problem is it tends to get not as scalable. It tends to you know have accumulated cruft. And so there's a limited amount of that sort of stuff going on. You can have some stuff where you say, oh, this is a very spammy area, so do slightly different scoring, things along those lines. But for the most part, we, we don't have as much that's targeted for specific industries. Um, what we do have is we're doing a better job of detecting whether someone is an authority in a given space. So it might be medical, travel, product, you know, any of a number of different categories. And we try to find the authoritative sites within that those categories, and, and then if those sites are showing up, then okay, maybe we can make sure that they rank a little bit higher. And I, I think that's definitely a quality win, but I don't know whether you call that health specific ranking. It's general ranking that just happens to also improve health and happens to improve other topics. So, how many different categories? Lots. Lots. All automatically done? Like Google's using yes. secret powers of figuring out this yes. is that. And yes. then you're kind of figuring out these are sites that seem to be about that kind of topic and Authorities. have authority in it, therefore. And that's it. We're done. No, it's just <laughs> doing it. Um, While Danny is looking for another question, let me just mention one oh, last thing, okay. if yeah. it's okay. No, go for it. Um, the Webmaster Tools team, uh, I, does anybody do rich snippets, structured data? Any? Okay, so a few people. Okay, that's great. So we're, we're rolling out a test, a beta program of something called the structured data dashboard, whatever you want to call it. That, that we're thinking about returning errors that would show you if you didn't mark up correctly with your structured data, it will show you, oh, here's what the problem was, you're missing this field. If you're interested in joining that beta, they made a special URL, so get ready to write it down. <laughs> it's bit.ly, B-I-T dash L-Y slash. Oh, aren't you sweet. Yeah. You could use we can't, Google. We could have named it with goo.gl, but it's bit.ly, B-I-T dash L, uh, dot L-Y slash. SD testers, like structured data testers, testers plural. So if you go there, it's just a simple URL. It has your email address and it has your website from Webmaster Tools. So if anybody would like to try that out, they actively are looking for some people to help improve uh, the testing and see if those, you know, those, those error reports are useful to improve your structured data testing. So uh, bit.ly slash SD testers, as in structured data testers. So anybody that wants to use that, they're actively looking for sites that want to try that out. Um, did you not have a cameo in the intern? I did not. I applied. Who knows me, right? Sergey you applied? Was well, yeah. I did apply. Sergey, yeah. I'm not going to say, no, you can't be in it. Yeah, we'll go fill over another. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he, yeah, Sergey was in it twice, and there were a bunch of Googlers who were in it. But you know, maybe I don't fit the right demographic. I'm too old or something like that. That was the real question. Yeah, you've been fine. You've been fine. It was it was better than I expected. It was awesome. I got to see Owen in the cafeteria. He walked yeah. right by me. It was really freaky weird. Yeah. That was before it turned out that he actually tried. You see, he tried to use his badge to get into places he shouldn't get into. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, how much? Talk to us about bounce rates. Um, how much do they affect rankings and? <sighs> Yeah, I'm not characterizing. I mean, like yeah, yeah. So you no, got you got ways to tell if people are bouncing off the site. Don't you can't you tell he, if sites he just, are coming he off? He just looked at Google Analytics and it had no impact. I'm not saying did I say Google, about did I say Google Analytics? You, I said you have ways of figuring out what an engagement site with a site, don't you? So you asked about bounce rate last year, and last year I said the last time I looked into it, we did not use that in our ranking. Well, and, you said, and well, still, last time I looked into it, still we don't true. use click-through rates off of our search results like some other search engines do, because that could be really manipulative. But, I mean, you, you The can, answer is the same as it was last year, no. which is, do you have no to idea? the best of my knowledge, we don't use bounce rate within... So you don't know what the engagement rate... You don't know people's dwell time on websites or things like that. I mean, you got all of Kansas oh. City online. Yeah, That's but... A sample. I was actually talking to someone from Kansas City today, and I was like, how do you like Google Fiber? I'll, I'll get back to the question. Okay, no, no, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to evade it, but uh, <laughs> and she was like, "Well, actually, it, you still have some channels that drop out, and I can't watch TV on my Nexus 7." I was, I was waiting for her to be like, "I love Google Fiber; it's the best thing ever." And she's like, "No, there, there's some things you got to improve." Yeah, I see her in the audience. I'm not going to point at her and make her feel shy. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that 
she'll feel comfortable giving feedback, and I'll pass it on to Milo, who's the head of Google Fiber. That will probably get fixed, right? Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> click through. I am not a fan. I, I'm not saying click through. I'm just I'm trying okay. to understand. There are a variety of ways that you could probably figure out yeah. universally what dwell time or engagement might be on websites. Okay. I'm not so, saying anything specific. I'm just kind of saying generally. So why don't we just call it like user behavior, right? Okay. Dwell time, click through, whatever you want to call sure. it. And I'll tell you why I'm skeptical of user behavior in general. It's because when we rolled out, well, when we rolled out the, the there was two features we called the voting buttons in the toolbar. And it had a happy face and a frowny that face. That was your first. That was our very, that was your first, very first attempt. Talk, yes. too, by the way. Yeah. This new guy shows yeah. up. I'm doing a conference. This new guy from Google shows up. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm going to be talking today, and I've got this new thing I want to share with people. Yeah. This is before people swamped. It was it was hilarious because even back then we didn't have the ability like the the graphic design people. There was like one guy, right? He does all the logos, and so we needed the artwork to do the happy and the frowny buttons, and like. <laughs> No one had the time to do it, and so my wife actually made the happy and frowny buttons <laughs> and, the, and the Google toolbar. So, and what we found was those a happy, very, very little history post later on. Uh, I'll the uh, images. I have said I've said that before. Huge in the story past. for Saturday. <laughs> Hold on, we got it. We got okay. it. Oh, so anyway, told you. so what we found was Stanford students emailing each other around saying, I'll click on a happy face on your website if you click on a happy face on my website. Uh, and, I, and now that we don't, I don't think we have the voting buttons anymore. These days we just call that Reddit. <laughs> but, <okay. laughs> so, so anyway, uh, like 75% of all the clicks were happy. Like everybody was only upvoting themselves. And so from the very beginning, I've looked at, you know, block data, block the site, all these sorts of things. When you look at usage data, um, it's really sparse when you look at like explicit. Okay, let's let's get you some block data or whatever, and and you see over and over again like with the happy and frowny buttons, people tend to skew this data. So I'm just really skeptical that people wouldn't spam that, and you would have to do a ton of work to try to clean that up and try to make it into a useful signal. I'm I, in general, I try not to take any signal off the table. And that's like, why say, you don't use Google Plus. <laughs> that's my segue into. <laughs> No, actually, if, no. If but my you second notice, is, you've you actually, notice. you've actually, I wanted to get it. I wanted an update on it because you've said that if you in notice, aggregate, you're not using the plus. If you notice, every time you've tried to push me towards, well, you use Google Plus, right? right? I have pushed back in the last few months, and it's for similar sorts of reasons. You know, um, it's not necessarily. It can be a little sparse. It can be a little skewed, and so I would have to be convinced before I would want to use that as a search quality ranking signal. It's safe to assume that we have analyzed the data and you know it's we'll continue to analyze the data and we'll see how it looks over time. We will but, totally use it all the time if that helps. <laughs> but then you'll get a very skewed sample. And that's exactly the sort of problem. So that's why I we're, tend we're not to we're all subject experts. We would never do abuse. Right. So that's why you know I, I'm not going to say we would never use a particular signal other right. than maybe whether you buy ads or something like that. But in general, I'm, I'm quite skeptical of those sorts of... Did you just say a signal is you buy ads? Not a signal. Right, we would, we would, I, I don't want to take yeah. anything off the table other than if that. you buy ads, okay. comma, you will not rank higher, you will not rank lower, you will not rank anything differently. Impor important. Not. Yes, not. Yes, ad. not. Uh, what do you buy ads? That's not a signal. <laughs> I'll get, I, that's one I'm definitively happy to tell you is not a signal in our rank. Right, I'm going to try to go just about five minutes late. And hopefully I won't get into too much trouble. I want to get a few more questions. Um, in hey, Hey, are you going to do anything about the manipulation of suggested search results? You have to in France, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so it's really weird. We, you know, I'm just speaking for myself personally. I, I don't work on the suggest team, but suggest does use queries that people type in, right, uh, as one of the signals. And uh, and it's very strange when in some countries people will say, okay, well people type in this, and we suggest say, you know, Danny Sullivan Jewish or something like that, and someone will say that's offensive or that's incorrect or whatever, you have to remove that suggestion. And we're like, but that's what people are typing in. So it's just the output of the algorithm. It's not like we said, hey, did you want to check if Jan Danny Solomon was Jewish or gay or whatever. Um, and so it's... I'm actually both. <laughs> no, no, I'm <laughs> actually both. Not that there's anything wrong with that, right? That, no. that's, the, that's the thing. Is... Well, first of all, if you could have seen the chocolate cake that Barry got in his kosher meal, I wanted to be Jewish. Yeah, I, can, I can believe it, yeah. No. And secondly, if I had the body of some of my gay friends... <laughs> Any, <anyway. laughs> <laughs> so, okay, we got a little farther afield, but basically, uh, yeah, it, it is really strange that you, in some cases you have governments or courts, more specifically, usually saying, look, you have to remove the suggestion, 
when really that's it's almost like that's just a reflection of what people are typing in. That's a really strange experience. All I know is you so. just guaranteed I'm going to show up for Danny Sullivan Gay Day. Uh, no, I don't. Thanks very much. <laughs> and see, that's why we would be skeptical of those sorts of signals. So. Okay. So. Um, yeah, but you get some guy over there on Mechanical Turk, you know, typing it all in. Hey, go here, do search for this, click on that, and then that works. You know, not not so not much anymore. necessarily. Okay. And you know, we can sign up on Mechanical Turk too. So. Um. Okay. Uh, let me do one. Actually, I'm going to end with it. So we won't get through it. So let me just do housekeeping because we're out of time. So a couple things. First of all, I think you have to go like at 6:30 of a hard stop. So um, usually, what happens is everybody comes over here and they swamp Matt, and he stands there and he talks for a very long time, which I think he's still willing to do. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want, if you follow him all the way down the escalator, there's like a red carpet and a little thing in a backdrop. And then as you're talking to them, you could probably get your friend to stand to take a picture yeah. of them next to you. Yeah, and then it looks like you're on a red carpet with Matt, and then you can tell everybody he's your best friend and, <laughs> you know, get more clients. Give me way. your SEO contract. Yes, so maybe so we'll let you kind of wander yeah. out and downstairs with it. Yeah, there. normally we just congregate here, but I'll, I'll head downstairs. There, there, the there literally are a thousand t-shirts with the Matt Cuts debunking flow chart, and thanks to Calm uh, 5 Media for helping put that together. And those, Karen, where will people, don't go yet, you can't go, because I've still got, he's got last gems of wisdom to give to you. You're right. They'll be down by registration. Matt, two last questions before we close things out, and I thank you, and everybody goes. Uh huh. Um, gosh, I maybe we're done. I think I, I think we're done. We seem pretty close. Well, what were they? I, I, my my <laughs> questions were: I was wondering. I actually, three last things. First of all, what do you think is the most um, overrated thing out there right now with SEO? Uh, short-term social, but not long-term social. Okay. No, I, I think longer-term social will be an important trend, but. In the same way that we're not able to crawl a lot of data, say on Facebook or wherever, short term we might not have access to that. Longer term, I think people will have a better idea who writes what on the web, and all that sort of you know authorship, all that sort of stuff will will come into play. But we might not have access to other people's private silos at this time. And most underrated? Oh man, design, user experience. I mean, if you look at some of the best websites and, and best startups and best mobile apps, the ones that are really getting fire, it's ones that are just like pure word of mouth where they have a fantastic user experience. So put some work into the polish. That can make a big difference. And what's like been your biggest surprise over the past year? It could be anything. I don't care. I just wonder what surprises Matt Pets because you seem to know everything. You know, it is impossible to gauge what people are or aren't going to notice. That's one of the other reasons we don't announce algorithms is we can be like, <laughs> here it is, da, 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 and everybody's like, I don't see it, you know. <laughs> or we're like, oh yeah, there's this tiny little change, and everybody's like, oh, the sky is falling, fire and brimstone, run away, run away, oh my god. And it's impossible to gauge. Like, you know, with Penguin 2.0, we knew that it was going to have some impact, and so we tried to soften it as much as possible before we launched it, made a video, blog posted, and people are like, Oh come on! You can do it harder than that, you know. And so you call that a hit? You call that a hit? <laughs> and, and so don't worry, it will get harder. But uh, but we wanted to start small, and it's it's literally impossible to tell exactly when you throw something over the over the wall exactly how it's going to be received. All right. Um, thank you so much for being here and taking all the questions. Thank you very much. Right.